Hey, everybody, it's Tanner and Chrissy from Common Sense Education back at it again without hockey hair this time. <laughs> Good trim. I, nice can hair. we speak to mine, though? Is this could this be a form of hockey hair? I don't know <laughs> what this is. It, it is a different it, sport. There's a center for the Buffalo Sabres named Jack Eichel that kind of has a similar. Yeah. So sort of short and 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 big on top. So I think, I think we are both qualified as potential hockey players at this point, <laughs> at least air wise. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Although when I, when I used to skate, I couldn't skate backwards. So it was really my Achilles heel and it, <laughs> you can't do much when it, when it comes to skating or hockey, when you can't skate backwards. And I can't skate at all. So there we go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so we yeah. will not be starting a common sense rec hockey team. Uh, but we yes. will be talking to you about one of our latest reviews. Chrissy, you've got a tool. Let's hear about I it. I do. Indeed. All right. So today I am going to talk about the National Center for Case Study Teaching in Science. I'm going to throw up. There is the URL. Um, and let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. So it sounds very official and it looks pretty dry. I understand. I, I had the same reaction. Everybody probably will. However, let me just tell you that this is a free treasure trove of materials that not only if you check out these dates, you can see that it stays very up to date. So despite its sort of stodgy looking appearance, um, it is very, uh, very much up to date, has some recent material for you. And basically the idea is this, it has lots of different real life case studies about a huge variety of topics and in a large variety of formats. Let me show you what I mean. So you can browse these case studies that focus on, yes, scientific topics, but also topics like social justice, cryptids, pseudo, other pseudosciences, all kinds of things that could potentially be really interesting in a variety of subject matter classrooms. So if you check out the different headings, you can search all of these different sciences. So that seems pretty standard, okay. Uh, but it's a long list, so there's a lot that you can peruse. Educational level, middle school, high school, obviously these won't apply to the classroom. One, um, one quick note, we are not seeing the menus when you click on them, which is strange. Well, it's, it, must be is some, strange. it must be some way they're displaying it on that site. Um, okay. So I'm not like I can see when you've made when you've clicked on education level, I'm not seeing what those education levels are, unfortunately. Okay. Well, let me just tell you um, that there primarily is um, middle school and high school are the ones that are most applicable to our audience. So. Um, I will focus on those. There's not a ton of middle school material, which is definitely one of the drawbacks, but there's quite a bit of high school. And I also think that the high school materials could potentially be adapted for lower levels, depending on what you need. Um, you can see the type and method. So I'll just give you a couple examples since you can't see what I'm looking at here. There are debates. There's there are, uh, flip classroom lessons, jigsaw uh mini cases role plays so all different formats and then in terms of topical area which is different than the subject heading there are things like i mentioned pseudoscience social issues women in science regulatory issues so it branches out from biology engineering etc and you can also search by date um, and you can see up top that there are very recent uh, articles, but also down here, um, you can't see that I'm clicking, but 2020, <laughs> uh, and it goes all the way back to 1999, a great year for prints. 
So um, what I think is very special about this is that all of these things are entirely free. And let me open, and you can tell me, Tanner, if you can see um, what I am seeing. Can you see the search results? Yes. Excellent. Okay. So these are some, these are the middle school results. Could grazing be dangerous? Ask the cows. Then as you click in, you get the abstract, you get the lesson objectives, keywords, educational level, etc. cetera. Um, all of them are in English. That is definitely and only in English, which is a definite drawback. If you download the case, you aren't able to see it because I, you're still on this page. Um, you will see the text and there are, off, there are also um, often graphic organizers that are included, worksheets that are included, depending on the content type that you are looking for. Um, if you would like the teaching notes and the answer keys, if there are embedded questions, it's $25 a year, which won't break the bank if you decide that this is a really useful tool for you. Um, but I think, you know, I was thinking about, again, I, I believe I've mentioned I was a high school English teacher. I could see a lot of potential uses. Um, there are a lot of reading comprehension questions, a lot of um, opportunities to practice speaking, presenting, debates, research, et cetera. So it goes far beyond uh, the science classroom, I would say. And text heavy is, is a big drawback. It's, you know, very much text-based PDF format. So in that way, it's limiting their not interactive elements within the um, resources themselves. Yes. I like the idea that, that this is real world science. It's, it's almost like there's been long been a dream to kind of, surface actual scientific research in the classroom in a digestible way. It seems like this is an attempt to do just that, but through the case study model versus just parsing some sort of peer reviewed um, study. Um, it, it's kind of like reframing and, and exposing maybe the experiments and studies that went into what would make their way into like a peer reviewed article for a scientific journal or something, right? Yes. So instead of the teacher having to find applicable articles and create a lesson that will work for a particular format, it's all there for you already in that format. Which is pretty is, cool. Do students do anything? Is there a kind of creative or experimental approach to this? Or is it mainly just understanding the information? There's definitely, you could definitely group kids, have them do research since there's there are jigsaw formats and debates and student presentations. There's there I feel like there are a lot of opportunities for kids to really dig in and get involved and take ownership. So it's not just reading yeah. and answering questions. But this seems like this would work perfectly in a science classroom, but this seems like it would go really well in ELA classrooms too, especially for ELA teachers looking to do cross curricular connections or like maybe even team teaching with a science teacher in the school. I mm -hmm. could see a lot of possibilities there. There may even be with some of these topics, social studies connections. I think you mentioned. Absolutely. There's some social From what I saw. There. Yeah, for sure. And I think there, there were some media literacy oriented questions too, that I saw yeah. um, in some of the articles. And it looked like there was a recent article on bare bile. So if I that's your thing, that. <laughs> we've, you're covered. I mean, how often are you looking for that? And you're like, where am I going to find the right resource for this? <laughs> there it is. It's right there for you. Bear bile. So you can find a review of this tool over at commonsense.org slash education, as well as everything we talk about on this show, which comes out every Tuesday on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and tune in and let me roll that end bumper 
Beautiful um, bean footage. Oh my god, let there me take I really screwed up. We got the the new episode every Tuesday on there. Gotta take that off. All right. See everyone next week. <laughs>